When I was in high school, I really didn't wear makeup. Expect. 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 They may not be appropriate for your. Asara ko dito. Keeps sliding. Anyway, move this out of the way. everyone, welcome to another video. It's Ingrid. I'm an image consultant from the Philippines. If you're new here, I talk about practical living, image, style, and communication tips. This is the third part of my makeup and skincare talk. Part one, I talked about the makeup kit diet. Part two, I talked about the practicality of addressing your skin issues and not resort to covering them up with tons of makeup. And now in this video, we'll talk about the lifestyle audit, skincare edition. Why is a skincare audit necessary? As we go through the different stages in life, our skin may respond in different ways, may have different needs, and the products we use may just stop working for us. It's essential, of course, to have a good knowledge of your skin type, your skin texture, how your skin responds, your allergies, and your common skin problems. If this is an area you need help with, consult a board-certified dermatologist who can help you get to know your skin. When you know what you're working with, it will be easier for you to streamline what products you really need to incorporate into your skincare routine. If, for example, you have good skin and acne is not a problem for you, congratulations, do you need to purchase the whole acne skincare line of a certain brand? If you don't have fine lines yet, do you really need to get wrinkle smoothening products or would that be too much for your skin? Prevention, they say, is better than cure. Yes, but there are product lines that are specifically formulated to address a concern so if you don't have that just yet, you might be putting on unnecessary ingredients on your skin. This will also help you not to be swayed by certain skincare trends. Just because vampire facials became a thing, just because people jumped in on the 7 to 10 step skincare bandwagon, you don't necessarily have to do it. When you know your skin well enough, you pretty much have a good inkling if something that's trending is worth spending your money on. Remember, what may work for others may not work for you in the same way. What is your skin exposed to often? When I was in high school, I really didn't wear makeup except for school events. In college, I was commuting, so that meant my skin was often exposed to pollution, sweat, and more germs. So in my Kikai kit before, I brought facial wash with me, I had cotton, toner, and sunblock. Kasi I'll leave the house. My face is clean. Pagdating ko sa school, syempre nag-commute na ako, so I need to clean my face again. Note what your current activities are, what your skin is exposed to often, kasi you may need products that will help care for your skin based on those conditions. Consider the environment. Here in the Philippines, it's very humid. How does that affect your skin? Now, if you travel or migrate to another country, there might be a shift in your skincare products. When I traveled to Israel and Jordan years ago, akala ko okay na yung regular moisturizer ko. Pero first day ko pa lang, my face was so dry and had patches of red. Di kinaya ng regular moisturizer, so I wasn't able to prepare. Buti na lang, I had argan oil with me. So here in the Philippines, I don't always use argan oil on my face. But when I was there, I had to apply it like twice within the day as we were visiting the tourist sites because my skin was just really dry. So again, part of your skincare audit is consider the environment. You also might be tempted to buy products that look so pretty, the marketing is so good, but they might not be appropriate for your skin in the current environment. So, masasayang lang yung product. What are your activities? What are your habits? Are you into extreme sports, water activities? Do you get tons of sun exposure? Because that means you may have to get products that don't only nourish your skin, but also products that give you more protection for the condition you subject your skin to. I also mention activities because this may also influence the formulation of the products that you're using. If you often subject yourself to sandy, sweaty activities, you know, a heavy or thick formulation like body butter may not be a good option for you. While body butters moisturize really well, if your activities involve sand, sweat, and dust, you will often feel more sticky and the dust may stick to your skin more if those are the formulations that you use. But maybe the lighter gel types that are non-greasy may be more apt for you based on your activities. In terms of habits, for example, do you drink alcohol often? Do you smoke? Do you often sleep late because mahili ka magpuyat? Why do we need to note this? These habits 
habits do have an effect on our skin. Either you stop the habit altogether or you find products that will address how your skin is being affected by these habits. Stress and not getting enough sleep can often show up on the skin. Minsan kahit anong effective nung product na nilagay mo pag yung habit yung root cause, then the products just won't work as well. Know your genes, race, and ethnicity. Is turning red a quality you share with several members of your family? Do you have a tendency to tan easily after sun exposure? Are dark under eyes common in your family members, even if you've gotten enough sleep? While each of us is unique, sometimes we have physical qualities and characteristics that are part of us because of our genes, race, or ethnicity. How does this apply to the skincare audit? When it comes to choosing products, there are some products and formulations that may be so effective effective for Australians, for example, or for those living in Korea. If it works for you, well and good. If it doesn't, at least, na manage mo yung expectations mo and you don't, you don't get so frustrated when a product doesn't work well for you. On that note, that is why I am an advocate of sampling or getting sample sizes, especially for skincare, makeup, and hair care. It's painful when you spend so much on a big bottle of a product only to find out that you're a. Allergic to it, or B. It does not work for you the way you expect it to. Whatever it is, if you bought the whole bottle and it's a hefty price, how unfortunate. You can give it away for sure, but what if it also doesn't work for the person you give it away to? So that's money that just goes down the drain. You do a skincare audit because you also want to be smarter when it comes to purchasing your products. When I want to try something that's completely new to me, I always get the small bottle first. Because that gives me enough time to test it, let it work on my skin, and at least hindi siya long-term commitment. When I find out that it works and the results are amazing, then I, I buy the bigger version. So just just to recap, the Lifestyle Audit Skincare Edition, know your skin well. Know your type, texture, quality, how it responds, your allergies, and common skin problems. What is your skin exposed to often? Consider the environment and weather. Your activities and habits. Your genes, race, and ethnicity. I hope these would be able to guide you as you clean out your skincare drawer, guide you in your purchases, and identify your holy grail products that work really well with your skin and are worth spending your money on. I'll see you in the next video. Be teachable, keep learning, and always be humble.